Well, good morning. Welcome. Welcome to this time of worship here at First United Methodist Church. My name is John McClarty. I have the privilege of serving here as one of our pastors. As we gather here for worship this morning, I pray that we would experience God's presence moving among us in a powerful way. Uh, I hope that you were uh, welcomed as you came in. I hope that you were handed a worship guide as you came in. And I hope that uh, if you are here for the first time, that, that you experienced a, a warm, the warm hospitality of our congregation. And I hope that if you see someone around you that you don't recognize, that you'll make a point before today is over that you'll go and introduce yourself to them and maybe new, make a new friend. I want to welcome those that are worshiping with us through our television ministry and online today through YouTube. It's a joy to have you as a part of our extended congregation. You can find our worship guide on the website or on the YouTube channel, and you can download it there and get the information that we are sharing this morning. Uh, I want to say I'm, I'm, I spent this weekend in, uh, in Portland and in Oregon uh, getting my, uh, doing my graduation, and I, I drove home um, Yesterday, in a snow shower, as we were making our way back to Portland, and uh, Texas greeted us, of course, with 107 degrees today, so I'm ready to go back. I um, also want to say uh, happy Mother's Day to those of you who are mothers, um, and to those of you who, um, in, through your presence and through your gifts, you nurture others and you give, show people warmth and, and love. Uh, we are grateful for you, and uh, thanks for that. Uh, you'll see in your worship guide lots of opportunities of things that are going on in the life of the church. You'll also have an insert in here uh, talking about our Reading with Friends ministry. This is something that we began last year. Uh, Sarah Pelican headed, heads this up, and uh, it's an opportunity to continue uh, developing readers uh, even in the summer months. So there are volunteer opportunities, uh, and this insert also has an opportunity for you to help this program financially. We have interns that we pay, and along with our volunteers, and, and we need to raise money for that. And so there will be burritos that you can purchase and pick up immediately following worship next week. So you have lunch next week all picked, all, all done already. You just make your order and then you pick up your burritos after worship and you can take them home and eat them. Uh, if you don't want to eat burritos but you want to help, then just make a donation and that will be fine as well. Um, but you can see this. There's a QR code if you want to order online or you can use this to order in the more traditional way. So today we're continuing our series on joy and what it means to, to experience joy in our lives. Our children are going to be leading us uh, later in worship, and that's going to be a great time. But, but for now, we're going to talk about how we can lift our voices together expressing our joy. So I invite you to stand as you are able as we sing together our opening hymn. and let's join together in our affirmation of faith which comes from Paul's book to the Romans, the last part of chapter 8. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? 
No, in all things we are more than conquerors through the one who loved us. We are sure that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, or heights, or depths, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus, my Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. For today comes from the Psalms. We'll be reading Psalm 100. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come into his presence with singing. Know that the Lord is God. It is he that made us, and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him, bless his name. For the Lord is good, his steadfast love endures forever, and his faithfulness to all generations. This, my friends, is the word of God. Amen. You know, have you ever wondered why God created human beings with the ability to sing? I mean, other animals in nature, they have sounds that sound like songs sometimes. They make noises sometimes to communicate with each other. But human beings have a unique ability to put notes and sounds and words together to convey thoughts and feelings. 
It's quite remarkable. I wonder why God did that. I have some theories. First of all, I think singing is a way of expressing ourselves. It's how we can share with others how we feel or what is important to us. Sometimes it's easier to learn things when we put things in a song and we kind of sing them so that we can remember. We can, we can use words and, and songs to convey praise and celebration. We can use words and songs to convey lament and sorrow. Songs can even comfort us, like when our parents would sing us a lullaby. Singing can help give voice to some of the things that may be going on in our heads and in our hearts. In addition, singing is good for you. It helps build muscles in your core because you learn to breathe from your diaphragm, that muscle in between your lungs and your stomach. You're, you can build lung capacity as you uh, hold notes together and you can sing out with more power. And people who sing are generally happier than the rest of the population. Okay, I just made that up. But, I mean, I don't have any stats to back that, but just look at our choir. You know it's got to be true. Are they smiling? I hope they're smiling. But probably most importantly, singing is a unique activity that we do in community. It's one of the very few things that we do as one. When we sing uh, as a congregation here in church, we combine our voices, either in unison or in harmonies, and it's, it makes beautiful sounds. And one of the things that we do when we sing together we breathe together as we reach breaks in the music. Now, how often are you with a group of people where everyone inhales and exhales at the same time? Very few times. I mean, the only comparison I could think of was when we cheer at a sporting event, like when something good happens and the crowd sort of erupts with approval. But that's not music. That's just cheering and noise. When we sing together, we make music together. And it's also one of the ways that we can demonstrate how we care for one another because uh, even though sometimes we, we breathe together, sometimes in choral music there are moments where you can't do that. You have to help each other. And there's a, there's a technique called staggered breathing which allows the choir as a whole to collectively hold out a note far longer than any single person has the lung capacity to do so. So staggered breathing is where I keep on singing even when my neighbor stops and takes a breath, and then once they've taken their breath, I'll take mine so that the song continues while we have to catch our breath. It's a wonderful example, I think, of how we can help each other, how we carry some of the workload without burning anyone out or collapsing from exhaustion. It actually applies to, our, to the whole of our lives, and staggered breathing concept is a way that we can help one another. So today we're going to celebrate, we are celebrating, those who regularly, sell, who regularly share their gifts of music and singing with our church. And I've got to tell you, I'm so grateful to be a part of a church that places such a high value on music and the investment that you make in it through your tithes, your offerings, and your gifts to sustain uh, this music ministry. But let's remember, though, that the gifts that are offered in worship are not for our entertainment. They are to lead us as we lift our voices together as well, as we explore our own giftedness, whether that be directly in music or in some other way, and as we lift our voices in prayer to God, this is what I hope we experience today as we celebrate these gifts. For now, I invite us into a time of prayer where we're going to lift our voices together in song. This is not going to be a prayer where you bow your heads and close your eyes. This is a prayer where we sing together. It's printed there in your worship guide. I hope the tune is familiar to you. Let's pray this together. Oh, for a thousand tongues to sing my great Redeemer's praise, the glories of my God and King, the triumphs of As we continue in our time of prayer, I lift up the following. As we continue in our time of prayer, I lift up the following in special need of our prayers. Hope Holgen, one of our uh, committed nursery workers, is going to be gone this summer studying in London. So I uh, hope that you will lift, 
keep her in prayer as that as the summer progresses. Our sympathy also goes to Jean and Elizabeth Newton on the death of their son, Nate Newton. Would you join with me in a moment of silent prayer? God of provision and unconditional love, on this day when we acknowledge the importance of motherhood among us, we first give thanks that you are a loving parent to us all. From your being, all life was born, and in your bosom, all creation is nurtured. You have formed us in your image as your children and gathered us together as a brood under your wing. You have united us as kindred members of one human family and we are grateful to be your offspring together. We celebrate your divine love reflected in human expressions of motherhood. We give you thanks for the mothers among us and ask that you strengthen them in their daily tasks. Grant them wisdom in the lessons they teach, patience in the discipline they foster, and persistence in their promotion of decency and compassion, both by word and example. May they be given the honor and thanks they deserve, but often do not receive. We thank you for all motherly figures, grandmothers, aunts, sisters, wives, stepmothers, foster mothers, guardians, babysitters, teachers, healthcare providers, and many others who practice self-sacrifice and embody compassion to all who are privileged to be in their influence. We acknowledge to you, O God, that even amid our grateful celebration, many of us come with restless spirits, reluctant to name the difficulties of this day. For some, this day brings the sorrowful awareness of their own inability to conceive biological children. Remind them, Lord, that those who struggle with infertility have always shared a special place in your heart. For some, this day is marked by loneliness and grief as they spend this first Mother's Day as a widower, an orphan, or a parent who has lost a child. To those who today live in the wake of the death of a loved one, grant glimpses of the resurrection. For some, this day reminds us of the mothers who were not able to be a source of strength, who did not respond to their children or sustain their families. We ask for healing from the wounds of our past, past, a path of forgiveness for wrongs both experienced and committed, and the rebuilding of trust forged in honesty, authenticity, and love. Therefore, remind us to live with a childlike faith, willing to share with every one of your children. We give you thanks, O God, who is a loving mother and father to us all, as we pray together the prayer that Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. I invite our ushers to come forward so that we may receive, they may receive our gifts and our tithes and offer them to God. As they come forward, you're welcome to give electronically. This information is on the back of your worship program or on the screen if you're watching on TV or YouTube. I just always want to say thank you for your gifts and support for our ministry here at the church. Your gifts enable the church to nurture and equip our children and students to be faithful followers of Jesus Christ through music, through Sunday school classes, music, and more, BAM camp, mission opportunities, our children and students are nurtured in the faith. 
this morning our children will share some of those things that they have learned which will be nurturing in their faith. So thank you for giving to equip our children to become disciples of Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, all of your works, all, of, all that you have done for us, testify to your love. You gave everything to bring us the promise of eternal life. By the power of the Holy Spirit, may all that we do and all that we are testify to your amazing care and compassion. In gratitude and love, we offer ourselves and our gifts to you. Amen.
It's a miracle anybody has time for church anymore. us know. Dear friends, as you read this, I'm just finishing my work with children out of school. Thank you for your understanding as I follow my calls of young people in need. I wonder what your calling might be. I can't wait to talk about it next week. Blessings, Miss Abby. Our calling for work as kids, what can we do? I can't simply drop everything and go on a mission trip. I'm not even allowed to stay up past nine o'clock. Look, there's more. P.S. If you're worried you don't have what it takes to be called by God, that puts you in good hands. The, com the Bible is full of people who felt unworthy to hear God's call, but God called them anyway. Somebody get a Bible. Miss Abby wrote down a few Bible verses to look up. Here's a Bible by the donuts. Well, where the donuts used to be. Sorry. I brought my Bible from home. Great. You look up Jeremiah 1, verses 4 through 8. That's in the Old Testament, you know. We know that, Lord. And you, look up Luke 10, verses 38 through 42. Luke is one of the four Gospels, you know. We know that, Lord. I found a story from Jeremiah.
God called Jeremiah. God called God called J Mary and Martha. Yeah, but would we even hear it? I don't know, especially because the world keeps getting louder. And life keeps getting busier. Let's be quiet and see if we hear anything. anything? Not yet. Let's try again. I think I hear something. That's just my stomach. Maybe that's God calling for you not to eat five no nuts at Sunday school. Nah, my stomach usually speaks for itself. What if God's call isn't something we hear without hearing? What if it's more worth hearing? Ooh, I like that. I feel called to go watch TV right now. I feel called to go work on my science project and then work on, well, and then play soccer and then. Ooh. I feel called to eat another donut. But wait, God's call isn't simply what we want to do. Aww. Aww. Then what is it? Deeper than that. Then what is it? No, I mean, it's more about making ourselves happy. It's about being more open to God's people and the world. That doesn't... God's going to have to do that? Why not? That doesn't sound easy. Doing what's right isn't always easy, but it's always, always right.
So when do you think we might get the call? Maybe someone already has. Who, me? Well, what are you doing right now? Watering a plant. And you just watered the plant down the hall. Yeah, but it wasn't. Yeah, but it wasn't like I heard some voice saying, "Behold, now go unto Sunday school this very day and water all the plants, for lo, they thirsteth." Maybe not. But why did you water them? Because I really love plants. And they needed a drink. See, something you truly care about met a real need, and you did something about it. That's what hearing the call is all about. Wow. wow. Do you think God might at least call me to do something I'm good at, like straightening my room, turning my homework in time, making sure? Do it may it may not be easy, but it's always always right. Yeah, but what about those who can't do anything? What if you don't start with what you think you can and can't do? Start with what matters to you. What is something you truly care about? Music? Great. Maybe you can inspire others by singing in the choir. But wait, I can't sing. Wait, what did you just say? Um, I can't sing? That's what I thought you said. Who told you that? Um, it's just that whenever I sing, people make faces. Are any of those people named God? No. Mm-hmm. Friend, have I got a message for you. Just know that God will call you because you're you. Your best is good enough for God, and it's what the world needs. The world needs so much. I've been wondering about a way to raise money. Whoa, can you say money in church? Yes, did. No, I mean, the girls always use words like gifts or contributions and tithes and offerings. Technically, tithing means giving one-tenth of what you own to the church. You know? We know, factoid. It's like some people think money's a bad word or something. Why not get money out of our system? Money, money, money. Feel better? Oh, yeah. <laughs> when it's used God's way, money can be a powerful tool for peace or justice. Change. Hey, that gives me an idea. Why don't we collect all the money we can and we call it change for the sake of change? Cool name. Raising money might be your calling. One question. What is the change we collect? Was it supposed to um, change? I don't know. The world needs so much. Why don't we decide together? In the meantime, I'm going to follow my calling and go get some change things. I'll come help. 
So what's everyone think? What does the world need? An end to bullying. More acceptance of differences. Food for the hungry. Agreed. Now what are we gonna do about it? Exactly, change bin, but they'll do. So, has everyone decided on what to do with the change? Not yet. We have a lot of possibilities. How do we decide which is best? Rock, paper, scissors? Go higher than that. Rock, paper, scissors? No. I mean, we need to reach higher when making hard decisions. Maybe it's time we really open up to God's call. Meaning? Let's pray. in education? Our church has adopted Booker T to help. What if we put together all the change we collect? I bet it would create a real difference. Why not? Let's do it. Wait, but where are we going to find people with any money? Hmm. Let's go. Please pass any spare change to the hour.
I'm not sure about that, but it's definitely enough to make a difference. You sure look happy. I think I found my call. What, raising money? Helping you. That's great. That's great. Make no mistake, we aren't just kids. Each one of us is a child of God. Each one of us has something to share. And each one of us is worthy of God's call. Well, what a gift. Thank you so much for your leadership, for your story, for your songs, and for telling the story of Christ and for reminding us of what it means to be called, to be worthy of Christ's call. I love the line in the song in the middle of the show, um, I don't know who told you you couldn't sing, but it wasn't from God, right? You all gave your voice. That was close. Okay. More or less. Cassie's right here behind us. She's been behind the scenes, and she's telling me that was more or less correct, so I remembered it in some. But the, the whole point is that, you know, we have these gifts, and you reminded us of these gifts that we have that we can share to glorify God and to grow in our faith as disciples of Jesus Christ. So thank you so much for telling that story, and thanks to, to Abby and to Cassie and to Kristen and to Josh and, and Melanie and for all the team that uh, helped put this together. Would you help me thank them one more time for sharing their gifts? I'll remind you once again that there are opportunities to serve all over the church and all over our community. And when sharing our gifts and sharing our, the, gift, gifts, the gifts that God has placed in us, we glorify God and we make our world a better place. So I hope that you will look for opportunities where you can do that, where you can share your gifts with others and where you can let God shine through your life. Now friends, we're going to leave this morning and I pray that we'll go uh, in the knowledge that Christ goes with us that the, the good news that is, 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 is ours to share is news that gives hope to our world. And I hope that you'll uh, thank these children for their leadership this morning and for sharing that story with us. I hope that you'll thank our, our, our team, and I hope that you'll consider ways that you will get involved and you will share your gifts and, and ways to serve the church. 
I hope that you'll buy burritos next Sunday as we uh, share those gifts and reading with friends as well. Now I invite you to stand as we receive the benediction. Friends, go forth from this place with the sure and certain knowledge that Christ goes with us. Bear witness to the love of God in this world so that the stranger you meet might find in you a generous friend and our world might be transformed by the gifts that you share in the name of Christ. Go in peace, and may the peace of Christ go with us all. Amen. Thank you.